neck and shoulders can really ruin your day. It can cause headaches, fatigue, mood swings, bad posture, disturbed sleep, and more. Day 26 of Commit is a focus on relieving tension in these areas. Please remember to like and subscribe, and stick around to the end for a breakdown of a pose from today's practice. Let's begin seated in easy pose, facing the long edge of our mat. Hands on your knees, sitting up tall, deepen your breath. Keeping your hands on your knees, let's roll those shoulders back. Good. Back to center. Let's go into some neck stretches, drawing half circles down from shoulder to shoulder. To center, take your hands together, forming an L shape with your index fingers and your thumbs. Position your thumbs beneath your chin and use your hands to guide your chin up carefully, making sure to not move beyond your point of comfort. Releasing the stretch, Interlace your fingers, placing your hands behind your head, elbows out wide, guide your head down, chin to chest, getting long through the back of the neck without pulling on the head with the hands, just using them to guide the stretch. And release. Take your left arm across your chest, using the right hand to assist. Other side. And release. I'm just gonna turn around here so that you can better see this next movement. Taking your right arm straight up, bending at the elbow, reach the hand down the back of the neck and between the shoulder blades as low as you can bring it. Opposite hand assists by holding the arm here or by helping to deepen the stretch.
Let's release and do that on the opposite side. And release. Taking your palms together behind your back, rotate the hands inward towards your body and up to a reverse prayer position. If this is difficult, you can simply grasp hands or clasp your arms at the wrists. and release. Taking your arms out ahead of you at shoulder height, bending the elbows to a 90 degree angle, palms facing each other. We're going into eagle arms, left arm over right. We wrap the arms with the intention of positioning our palms together. If we can't quite reach, we can press the back of the hands together instead. Get wide through the shoulder blades and keep the upper arms parallel to the mat. Let's release, opposite side, right arm over left. And release. Let's shift our legs to a deer pose. Both feet off towards the same side. One foot is behind us and one is ahead with a 90 degree bend in both knees. Twisting to the right, gazing over the back shoulder, tuck your chin down towards the shoulder to further stretch the neck. and twisting over to the left side. Hands on your knees to help deepen the stretch. Shift your legs, sending your feet off to the opposite side. Twisting to the right. Again, nodding the chin down towards the shoulder. to the left. And release to center. Making your way to a kneeling position, sitting on your heels, tops of the feet down. If this is uncomfortable, you can curl your toes under. Place your fingertips down on either side of your knees and round out the back getting wide through the shoulder blades, drawing the navel up towards the spine. Taking those hands behind you now, small back bend as we open the chest and gaze up. Hands down at our sides, fingertips pressing into the mat, tilt the head to the right. Right hand rests gently on the head to help deepen the stretch without pulling on it, just resting it here. Left fingertips pressing firmly down into the mat. Let's release. Over to the other side, tilting the head to the left. Left hand rests gently on the head. Right fingertips pressing down into the mat at our side.
and release. Still in kneeling, turn to face the short edge of your mat. Hug your shoulders, rounding out the upper back, getting wide through the shoulder blades. Release and switch your arms, bringing the opposite arm on top. Again, getting wide through the shoulder blades. And release. Clasp your hands behind your back and raise the arms just a little bit here, opening up through the chest and the shoulders. Release the hands. Coming forward now to a tabletop position, line yourself up and begin to flow through cat-cow, moving with your breath. To a flat back, reach your hands forward as you lower the chest down to a puppy pose, keeping your hips stacked above your knees. Option to bend at the elbows, bringing the hands together above your head. Releasing puppy to a child's pose, sending the hips back over the heels. Bring your arms back at your sides and hold on to your heels. Forehead touches down. Raise the hips as we gently roll onto the top of the head in a rabbit pose. Still holding onto the heels, getting wide through the shoulder blades. Releasing rabbit pose, hips over heels. Make your way to a tabletop position, lining up wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Flat back, engage the core. We're gonna find some movement through the shoulders now as we keep our arms straight and squeeze the shoulder blades together. Still keeping the arms straight, bring your shoulder blades as wide apart as you can. Squeeze them together. Send them out wide. So again, we're not bending through the elbows here. The movement is coming only through the shoulder blades. Keep moving at your own pace.
Good, returning to tabletop, we're gonna thread the needle. Let's send our right arm out to the side and then needle it under the body coming to rest on the right shoulder and side of the head. Keep your hips squared off to the short edge of your mat as you reach your left arm overhead, palm flat. Slowly and carefully making your way back to table, let's do that on the other side, extending the left arm, needle it under, coming to rest comfortably on the left side, right palm reaches up above the head. release, returning to table, and then make your way down onto your belly, arms at your sides, palms facing up. Big inhale on an exhale to locust pose, raising the legs, chest, and shoulders, making sure we're not holding our breath in this position. And lower down. Send your right arm out to the side at shoulder height, plant the left palm beside you and step the left foot back and over the right leg, opening up to the left side in an open wing pose, stretching through the right shoulder. Release, returning to your belly. Let's do that on the other side. Left arm out to the side at shoulder height. Plant the right palm and step the right foot back and over the left leg. Opening up to the right side, stretching through the left shoulder. Release, returning to your belly, and make your way to a downward facing dog. Walk your feet to the head of your mat in a forward fold. You can stay in forward fold or allow the upper body to get heavy and ragdoll, hugging at the elbows, finding a little sway in the body. On your next inhale, coming to a half lift flat back, Allow your arms to get heavy and just dangle beneath you. Shift your weight front to back, side to side on your feet, creating movement in the arms and finding release in the shoulder girdles. and fold. Inhale all the way up, arms up. 
exhale, hands to heart. Bring the left arm down at your side. Reach the right arm up and over to a side bend. Release, opposite side. Release, interlace your fingers and flip the palms to face out. Then reach those hands up, getting long through the body as we gaze up towards our hands. And then exhale, hands to heart. Finding a few moments of stillness here as we deepen our breath to finish up in mountain pose. Let's take a look at Thread the Needle. This is a pose that stretches the shoulders, the chest, the arms, the neck, and the upper back. It's also a small twist that can help relieve tension in the spine. So there's a few different things that you can do in this pose to kind of play around with it and make it your own. Find what feels best for you. We're also going to look at a way that you can modify this pose if you find it uncomfortable. So first, let's start from a tabletop position. So I'm going to start here with my left arm under right. So normally I would take that arm out to the side and needle it under. So I'm just coming to rest on the side of the arm and the side of the head. One thing we want to avoid in this pose is coming through too far. And then we notice that our hips are starting to pull. And if we were to do anything like a leg extension or anything here, we would be losing our balance a lot. So you want to just gently twist and just come to rest on the whole arm. So you shouldn't be pulling too, too, too far back. And then once you're here, hi, we're gonna keep this arm straight. If you want, you can go into a mudra here, which is just a hand position of your choice. And then this opposite arm, we can keep it in front of us for support, stay up on our fingertips, or reach it overhead here. And you'll notice if you do that, there's a lot opening up here. So that's up to you. And when I'm here, from table, I want to keep my hips squared off to the short edge of my mat up there. Good. So from here, there's a few more things that you can do. So you can take this hand, reach it overhead but closer to the head, and press through to twist open and gaze up towards the ceiling. Still trying to keep my hips squared off to the short edge of my mat. And this is just deepening that twist if that's something that you really enjoy. Another thing that we can do to play around in this pose is to extend the leg that's on the same side as our supporting arm. So I'm going to keep this hand down for support, press firmly into the mat, and then extend that leg nice and slow. And we don't necessarily want to bring it up high too much because that might be a little bit hard on your back. So to start, just extend straight and reach long through those toes. And if you find that easy, you can even challenge your balance further by extending that supporting arm up. Good, so I'm really pressing firmly through the back of my lowered hand right now, just to kind of counter this. And worst comes to worst, you roll onto your back and you just get back up, get back into position, laugh it off and try again. So these are some things that we can do here, sweetie. These are some things that we can do in this pose. Hi to kind of advance it a little bit. So now if you have knee pain and you don't like to be in a tabletop position, you can go into this pose from child's pose with the arms extended forward. You simply needle under, and then we keep this arm extended up here. We can even bring the hand closer here. And then you can kind of play with your hips, bring them up a little bit. We don't necessarily need to stack the hips directly above the knees in this pose to get the benefit of the stretch in the upper body because that's the focus in this pose. It's not anything to do with the lower body, it's all up here. So we can stay in our child's pose. Reach and other side. Good. If you have wrist pain and being in table pose is challenging for you, you can come down to your forearms or get there from a puppy pose. So from puppy or from our forearms, we would do the same thing, needle under. And then when you release, good. 
And finally, a nice way to modify this pose, make it a little bit more comfortable, is to use a bolster or a cushion or a blanket, and we're gonna place that under our head. So, from our table position here, I can needle the arm under, and I'm just gonna place my head on the side of the bolster. And then from here, there's not as much pressure being pressed down onto my arm, if you find that to be a little bit more comfortable for you. It's something that you can try out and get to know. So reaching the arm overhead is a little bit more challenging here, so you might wanna keep your arm on the bolster for support, or down. But even in this position, you can still go into that leg extension. You can still extend the arm up and play around here with different shapes. Everybody's practice is different and everybody's body is different, so different poses feel differently to all of us. So it's a really fun thing in yoga to play around with different shapes and poses to find what we enjoy doing best.